I'm Brad. Welcome to DIY Wouldn't You. In this video today, I'm going to show you how we turn this wasted space in our dining room like this into this beautiful pantry that adds a ton of storage space, as you can see. We have this nook in our dining room, that's what we call it anyway, a nook, that's just kind of dead space. It's about two feet deep and almost three feet wide. And typically, there's a chair sitting in it with stuff just piled up on top of it. And so what we're gonna do is, hang on for a second, listen. Hey, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click the button. You click onto the video and you're gonna click off the video. So just make one more click before you leave. All right, go ahead and tell them what we're gonna do with this project. We're gonna stud up a wall just along the edge here, frame a door in, and then we're gonna add a countertop right here on top of the chair rail with some shelves above, a shelf below, and add a light in there and turn this into a pantry. This was actually not as expensive as you'd think and easier than I thought it would be to do. Overall, it costs less than $400. And I'll go through a price breakdown explaining that. The very first thing that we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna mark our walls here where the door is gonna need to be framed out. And then we're gonna take this oscillating tool or multi-tool or I don't know what else it's called and notch out the casing on both sides, the Wayne's coating on both sides, the trim up top, the baseboard to where we can frame our wall in going to adjust the depth of the blade on my skill saw to cut the rest of this beadboard because that's going to take a lot less time than trying to cut a straight line with that oscillating tool. We didn't say a word. Who pooted? And the way our door casing is, it's actually going to overlap onto this wall by about a quarter of an inch. So we're going to have to come right here and draw a line similar to how we did over here. Cut all this off as well. Woo! I did it! So here's this wall. Now we gotta notch that up there. And this down here. Here at DIY Wouldn't You, we want to inspire and educate. We want to make projects entertaining and encourage you to try something fun learn something new, and impress yourself and your friends. We want to remind you that just because you haven't done something, it doesn't mean you can't. So keep learning, keep building, keep DIYing. I'm gonna take this stud finder. This one's by Black & Decker. I really like this one because... <laughs> it also has a laser level, a little screen right here. It shows when you're getting close to the edge of a stud. And then it shows the width of the stud. We'll be able to catch that stud with one side of the stud we're going to add on this side. Where we're not going to hit a stud, I'm going to be using these toggle bolts. These are a 3 16 by 3 inch. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drill a couple pilot holes for where the toggle bolts are going to go. And then I'll pull the 2x4 away, drill a larger hole through the sheetrock so that the wing nut can get through it, and then run my screw on in, tighten it down and it'll pull tight against the sheetrock. That wasn't so bad. Now I'll go back, put some more screws in the stud, and then at the top and the bottom. I'm gonna be adding a duplex outlet. Standard height on outlets and switches from the ground up is 48 inches to the top of the box. Since there is outlets on the other side of this wall in the kitchen. I'm going to mount this box at 44 inches to the top. And I'm cutting in sheetrock and adding a box on the dark exists. I'm going to use an old work box. What that means is you can cut a hole in the sheetrock and you put the box in. It's got these tabs. I'm going to tighten these screws. The tabs flip up and pull the box tight to the wall. That way you don't have to attach it to a stud. Now right here on the corner of the wall I've marked actually the stack up here. So you got a piece of 3-8 sheetrock or 2x4 other piece of 3-8 sheetrock, the door molding, and then this little mark right here is where this stack up of 2x4s actually ends. So what I believe I can do is use a paddle bit and drill in to where it comes through this 2x4 at a really sharp angle to where I can still put my sheetrock on and then my door molding and not have any issues. Boo! As far as the difficult level on this project, as long as you're a carpenter, painter, 
electrician used to be a fan. That was extremely difficult, but I'm glad that worked. Glad I thought about this before I put this two by four up. Where I cut the groove, I actually needed to carry it on up above where the door is gonna be framed out. Because from this outlet, I'm gonna run a wire back through and up to the light that we're mounting above this door. Then we're gonna scab this on top of this stud. There we go. Now we can put up sheetrock. Putty on the outside is done there. Wouldn't be ideal to take you inside the pantry with me to putty the inside, but I puttied it. So there's that. And for the sanding, I'm using this medium angled sanding pad by Gator that I got from Lowe's. It was a two pack. Um, I like these because it's got the nice little bevel. You can get it in tight corners, like right here. I want to take a quick second and thank the sponsor of this video, my wife. Without her, this project and many others wouldn't even be possible. So, thanks for sponsoring this video, babe. There's a hole right here in the flooring where the trim used to come out and cover it up. And I didn't even really think about that being an issue until we got the trim up and I realized that there's a hole in the floor. So, luckily we had another project where we tore up the carpet in our bedroom and put hardwood down that matches this. So I had some out in the shed, so I'm just going to put it down with the nail gun and then the door casing will cover up most of it. It's already mortised out for the doorknob and for the striker plate. And after squaring the door up in the opening, that lines up perfect. So that's right where we want it to be. Make sure that this door is nice and tight on the inside here. I'm going to use some of these shims that I've got and actually shim out this door casing here. And then I'll just break them off and go ahead and nail this part of the frame in. I really lucked out big on this one. My neighbor had a stack of this beautiful black walnut that was rough cut that he bought from somebody out of the barn from their grandfather's house. And 
he's not sure how old it is and uh, I told him I'd like to buy some from him. He's got a little bit nicer woodworking tools than I do and so he cut up a couple boards for me to use for the countertop in this pantry. That is nice. After a little bit of trimming here and there, a little bit of sanding, I got it to where it fits just right. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put a wax sealer on this. Um, and the product that I'm using is a CuttingBoard.com uh, natural wood wax. This is food safe, not that it necessarily needs to be, but uh, being that it's in a pantry and, you know, I don't know if maybe any food will sit on top of this, I thought, um, I thought maybe that was a good choice. And also, I've been wanting to try this product out for a while. Time out. This is not a paid product placement for CuttingBoard.com. However, after using this product, I like it very much and I would like to continue using this product, which I will because I have a whole bottle of it. However, CuttingBoard.com, if you would like to team up and maybe have some sort of partnership, please reach out to me. My email is in the description below the video. And anyone looking for a nice wood finished product that's all natural and food safe, please check out CuttingBoard.com. Anyway, back to the video. I'm gonna actually decrease the depth of that top shelf to eight inches where these other shelves are 11 and three quarters. And that's just so that you can actually get stuff up on that shelf past the door casing. Earlier in the video, I said I was gonna do a price breakdown of this project. So here we go. First and foremost, the door I got for the family hookup because my brother works for a door window company. Shout out Jones Stores, Moxville, North Carolina. This video is not sponsored by Jones Stores. However, maybe we could do some sponsored videos in the future. So, the price that I'm including in here for the door is a standard price, not what I actually paid for the door. So, door, $150. Lighting, $50. Shelving, $26. Primed 1x2s to support the shelving. Three pieces of those, $12. Countertop, I also got the hookup on this because my neighbor does woodworking on the side for fun. So, the sweet black walnut countertop. Sheetrock, $10. Fasteners, $10. Electrical, $40. Lumber, $20. Paint, $30. Door hardware, $15. Coming in at a grand total of $383, which is less than $400, like I said. Now this gets me pumped up because that's pretty affordable for such a big difference. Something else I said earlier in the video was, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Also, like the video. It shoots it up in the algorithms and we can get more views, we can make more videos, and we can have more fun. Speaking of fun, let's go back and finish this thing. Today, I'm going to use this to paint. Oh, good yeah. job. For the electrical side, get an electrician involved. That's what I did. That's how you build a pantry. If this video was helpful at all, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more fun projects that we're working on, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you back. If you want to be the first to know when we post another video, hit the notification bell. I'm Brad. This is DIY Wouldn't You. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.
this is for the pantry. A very important project. Maybe uh, use your product on some more of my products. Uh, well, I don't really have products, but I do projects. I'll be back with you shortly.